welcome all of you. So, in the last two classes, we discussed about nuclear power as a effect, the concept, basic concepts. I told you what is an NOE. You will see the enhancement in the intensity of the signal or of course, reduction in the intensity, both are possible. Well, one of the spin is irradiated with a low RF and basic condition it need not be scalar coupled. I told you basic requirement is they should, they should be spatially close to each other. Spatial proximity is important condition to observe NOE and we discuss various parameters which are responsible for this NOE. I said NOE depends upon the internuclear distance, it depends upon the magnetic field at which we are going to study because it depends upon the correlation time. In addition to that, it depends upon the pathways available for relaxation. Then we discuss about double quantum, zero quantum and single quantum relaxation pathways and what will happen to the signal intensity when the spins adapts double quantum relaxation pathway or the cross correlation is because of zero quantum pathway. One the, in double quantum there is enhancement in the intensity, in the zero quantum there is a reduction in the intensity by 50 percent. We saw that and zero of course, single quantum will not give rise to NOE, any NOE and of course, this dipolar relaxation is the main reason for observing NOE. Then the question is where are these fluctuating fields which is coming for the spins to relax. The spins will relax through dipolar rela interactions and there must be a fluctuating field for that. This is this also we discussed about interaction dipolar interaction. I said if they have two spins close to each other molecule may be undergoing tumbling, tumbling. The orientation of the spins with respect to the magnetic field do not change. However, diagrammatically I showed you when the spins are undergoing motion undergoing rotation or changing the position one spin will in, you know introduce or create oscillating magnetic field at the site of the other spin of course vice versa and this oscillating fields are responsible for the spins to relax that is what I said. Then the question is these are the originating origin of the uh, spins to relax and we discuss about the fluctuating magnetic fields. So, these fluctuating magnetic field releases energy and of course, when the molecules are fluctuating I mean undergoing motion to create a fluctuating magnetic field there is a term called rotational correlation time which I said yesterday and of course, we discussed about the spectral density function also. Spectral density function depending upon larmor frequency and the correlation time I said. The correlation time now I will start from today the correlation time it tells about the motion of the molecules here and the correlation time is you know defined as Tc. It correlates the orientation of molecule at two different times and depends upon several factors. In principle it is time required for the molecule to undergo one rotation by one radian that is the deferration. But anyway basically this is the important thing you understand and of course, it depends upon the molecular weight. Obviously, when the molecules are undergoing tumbling it depends upon the size or weight of the molecule and, and this is the reason I will say the correlation time tau c defines the sluggishness of the molecule. A short correlation time means fast random motion, a long correlation time means sluggish motion of the molecule. Uh, hello, I am going to stop here because I need a pen, ok I got the pen. All right, uh, a long correlation time means sluggish motion of the molecule. Let us see small molecules tumble more quickly here, I can see that these are the small molecules. These are large molecules, they tumble more slowly these are these molecules tumble very quickly and we can make a rough estimate of the correlation time for a given mass depending upon the mass of the size of the molecule or its molecular weight. This is if the molecular weight is given by MR and this is the a rough estimate to tell you what should be the correlation time. Of course, it can be different, but it is an estimate. If I know the molecular weight this has to be multiplied by 10 to the power minus 12 seconds then I know what is the correlation time in nanoseconds. So, all these things one is molecular motions are within nanosecond scale. I can make a rough estimate based on that and uh, just for an example uh, if I take a 3 by 3, 3 3.3 kilo Dalton uh, size of the molecule it is a small protein or whatever it is then the correlation time I can uh, calculate as 2 nanoseconds. That means, you can find out what is the resonating frequency it should or not resonating frequency just frequency 
because if I once I know the correlation time, I, so once I know two nanosecond, one over the inverse of two to ten to the power of minus nine, we can find out that turns out to be five hundred megahertz. Okay, so that is the frequency of correlation time for a particular size molecular weight. Motions with higher frequency will be generally absent for a perfectly rigid molecule. Perfectly rigid molecule, if you take very higher frequencies. Are generally absent. These are just an information. Information I am giving you. The spectral density at twice the larmer frequency, two omega, is very small for proteins and other molecules. Usually, twice the larmer frequency is very high frequency. That molecules have to rotate very fast. Usually, proteins and others are very big molecules. You know that they are all macro molecules. As a consequence, they cannot undergo rotation faster. So, correlation time will be not that much. So, as a consequence, I mean, correlation takes more time to undergo rotation. As a consequence, spectral density function at twice the larmer frequency is very small. So, this is especially for macromolecules. And the zero frequency also is there, zero frequency component of the spectral density function. It increases with increasing the molecular weight See, because the rotational frequency becomes lower and lower as a consequence of that. So, zero frequency component of the spectral density function increases. That means, if I draw a spectral density function, I can find, find out how it is changing as a function of molecular weight. We will see that now. The spectral density function depends upon two factors now. One is correlation time, other is resonating frequency. These are the two factors that defines spectral density function. So, the, basically uh, there is an expression for spectral density function which is given like this. It is simply j omega is twice the correlation time 1 over, over 1 plus omega squared tau c squared. This is the expression which has been derived. I am not going into the details of the mathematics because it will take enormous time. That is not the important thing because you should know what is the spectral density function depends on. It depends upon correlation time and spectrometer frequency, larmer frequency. And what does it mean? At omega equal to 0, I put this as 0, then what will happen? Maximum will be there. At omega is equal to 0, then this denominator is only 1. So, it implies at omega equal to 0, the spectral density is maximum. Correct? The spectral density, if you for this, it is you can find out what is the spectral density. When it be put this as 0, you are going to get maximum. That is fine. But then as you keep increasing, changing the uh, spectral that is changing the omega as you start going away, then you have higher and higher frequencies. As a consequence, the spectral density function drops off very fast. So, that means how fast it drops off as a function when this changes, this also depends upon tau c. So, these are the two factors which play together. How fast the spectral density function drops off is controlled by tau c, and this is an expression for that. That is what whatever I said in words is shown in figure here. So, we at 0 omega is, is this thing, this is spectral density function is maximum and you see it starts dropping off and I have written here three different types of graphs. This is a situation when omega tau c is larger great lar, is very much greater than 1. Omega naught is the larger frequency our tau c is the correlation time. When this parameter is very much larger than 1, you get a spectral density function like this. It is it has a large value here and then drops off very fast. And if you go to a small molecule where there is a fast motion, omega tau c that means it is very much smaller than 1. In which case what is going to happen? See there is a spread like this and then dropping off is very slow. And in the intermediate situation, in omega tau c is approximately equal to 1. This is the graph you are going to get. This is the graph of spectral density function plotted as a function of omega. And when you take omega into tau c together, and this is the graph you are going to get. And this is called a slow motion uh, region. This is a fast motion region for the molecules. So, this curve predict how the relaxation traits vary with the correlation time. This will define also the relaxation traits, how it vary as the correlation time changes. This is the graph to understand that. 
and one thing i want to tell you the total amount of the oscillating field is always a constant for example go in this graph the total amount of the spectating field you are going to get is a area of this this and this whatever you take it is constant it says total amount of the oscillating field is constant but the upper limit of the frequency vary with correlation time upper limit here is larger here smaller here and even smaller here so but the area of the curve is okay total amount of the oscillating field is constant now spectral density that means it represents the probability of finding a fluctuating magnetic moment magnetic component at any given frequency as a result of motion what it means is look at this uh, what i'm trying to say there is a fluctuating magnetic component of this field that there it has a frequency and as a function of the motion how it is changing we will come to know here see as a, as omega t is changing spectral density is here for a different frequency and it will tell you how the magnetic component is there how do you find out the what is the probability of finding a fluctuating magnetic field at any given frequency because of molecular motion because tau c is embedded into that equation basically if you draw a graph of homonuclear envoy between protons how it is going to change as a function of omega tau c always omega tau c comes as a factor multiplier as a function of omega tau c if i plot the envoy this is envoy and it the curve appears like this this is from this journal now you can see uh, forget about this part this i am uh, have not discussed i'll tell you about this is called roe not envoy that is a rotating film over as a effect i'll come to that at the end of this talk or maybe in the next lecture but at the moment we'll concentrate to only the envoy curve the envoy curve you can see this is positive that is 50 percent positive intensity when it is there it is 50 percent it goes through zero comes down and becomes minus 100 that is and the possibility of getting this enhancement in the intensity is plus 50 to minus 100 that is it can be half of minus 1 that is a possibility of getting the envoy if you draw as a function of omega tau c if you plot this as a function of envoy omega tau c this is envoy so what does it tell you for the small molecules here in this region this is a region pertaining to small molecules in that region we say envoy is positive for a large molecule here in this region you see large molecules and also omega tau c is larger here that means at higher and higher magnetic field then what is going to happen and NO is negative for small molecules at lower magnetic field NO is always positive for bigger molecule in this region it is negative you see it started coming here different values but you can find out a situation where it is this curve is crossing zero point that correspond to omega tau c is approximately like 1.106 uh, or 116 some number is there approximately consider one this is a point at which omega tau c equal to 1 there is a switch over point no is 0 here no no at all totally 0 so uh, that means depending upon the omega tau c you can have a positive no or negative no that depends upon whether it is a small molecule or large molecule whether you are doing at high field or at low field various parameters are coming into picture of course omega tau c means omega when i am taking it account the factor of magnetic field is embedded into it there is so this is the important point you should remember based on the omega tau c the NOE can be either positive or negative so if it is positive for small molecules and negative for large molecules all right for going more into the details of that when omega tau c is less very much less than one the molecules are tumbling very fast that's what i said and that gives a positive envoy this condition is called extreme narrowing conditions this is called omega tau c very much smaller than one is called extreme narrowing condition this you can experience only for small molecules that too in non-viscous solvents 
why non viscous solvents because the mobility has to be more in a viscous solvent if there if there is rigidity for the molecule to move it cannot rotate tumble very fast so it has to be in a small molecule non viscous solvents we are the, the, we have omega 2 is very much smaller than one this is called extreme narrowing condition we can go to another situation omega 2 is very much greater than one the molecule tumbles very slowly and there is negative enhancement for this here it is a positive noe here it is a negative noe and this condition is called diffusion limit it diffuses very slowly and this can be seen earlier i said it's for small molecules here this omega 2 is very much greater than one in the diffusion limit generally experience is for proteins or macromolecule big molecules especially in viscous solvents also in both in protein and big molecules and in viscous solvents when omega 2 will be greater than 1 you will experience this one molecules tumble very slow so extreme narrowing condition for omega 2 is very smaller than 1 positive noe and for small molecules non viscous generally and also in non viscous solvents when omega 2 is greater than 1 negative enhancement diffusion limit applicable for bigger molecules macromolecules like proteins etc and mostly in viscous solvents and we go to the next situation this is omega 2 is approximately equal to 1 in this limit the NOE goes to 0 when can it happen it will happen for certain medium size mo molecules and at a certain larmer frequency because the factor coming into the picture omega naught into tau c is the factor so either of them can be different either this can be larger or this can be larger does not matter but the product should be approximately equal to 1. So, it can de happen depending upon certain medium size molecules and at certain larmer frequency this factor becomes 1 and NOE will not be seen in such situations ok. Remember we, we discussed three conditions omega tau c very much smaller than 1, omega tau c very much greater than 1, omega tau c equal to 1 and omega tau c when exactly equal to 1 there is no NOE. One is a extreme narrowing limit other is a diffusion limit ok that all we discuss extreme narrowing limit small molecules positive NOE and diffusion limit big molecules non viscous solvents and, and uh, negative NOE that is what we discussed all right. The zero quantum transitions are thus favored by small molecules why we saw that see generally zero quantum transitions are the favorable because of this one the zero quantum process is energy is small as the difference in the larmer frequencies only when there is small molecule generally there will be zero quantum transition probabilities more but double quantum transition energy the sum of the larmer frequency is there omega i omega 0 these transitions are stimulated by rapid tumbling of the molecules molecules undergo rapid tumbling at uh, omega 2 which is equal to sum of the larmer frequency which is if I, as I told you already in the previous class if the resonating frequency is 500 megahertz WD is almost 1 gigahertz close to that and we can derive all this expression omega 1 omega 0 and omega 2 all the three we can vary what ok when we there is an extensive uh, theoretical calculation one can do but you should remember one more thing in, in this uh, three equations all of them of course we have taken into account the gamma it could be gamma also takes into account the population distribution I told you. So, we, if it is homonuclear situation that is gamma both are equal otherwise we have to, to heteronuclear gamma i and gamma s. Uh, one interesting thing you should observe here is there is tau c at the top and of course there are three factors here coming into the picture and all of them is inversely proportional to r to the power of 6 r to the power of 6 is coming in the denominator. These three equations are arrived at for three situations omega 1, omega 0 and omega 2 all the three. In the end so far we discussed about spectral density function, correlation time, varieties of things, diffusion limit, extreme narrowing limit etcetera. Now, we will go to a situation let us say I have done the experiment I want to get the distance what is the use of NOE that is what I told you it will give you spatial proximity information. 
So NOE should be, we have to use enhancement of the NOE to arrive at the distance information. How they are dependent on the distance. That's what, of course, previously I saw, told you 1 over RIJ to the power of 6. Let us see that. We know the expression for omega 0, omega 1, uh, W0, W1 and W2. Not omega is larval frequency here, transition probabilities. W0, W1 and W2. They all contain RIJ information I showed you in the previous slide. They are all in the denominator RIJ to the power of 6. That is there. And this, if I want to consider any dipole, why RIJ to the power of 6? You may ask me a question. Of course, we can, logically we can understand this. One can also derive it mathematically. But logically, consider the magnet, the strength of a dipole it, in the dipole-dipole interaction, it depends upon 1 over Rij to the power of 1 over, one over Rij cube. It is in the denominator. That is why it is written Rij, Ris, whatever it is, to the power of minus 3. But if I have to uh, talk about magnet, two magnet dipoles to have a dipolar interaction, dipole dipole interaction for NOE, then we need two dipoles. And NOE depends upon two dipoles because of that, these W's will depend upon Rij to the power of 6, inverse of Rij to the power of 6. That is what is the dependence of NOE. It depends upon 1 over Rij R. Here I have taken heterogeneously, that is why Rij has written. Rij is what normally we talk. Rij to the power of 6 inversely proportional to that. So, distance NOE dip, dip, depends upon the distance. So, if you know the NOE, we can get distance information. And for omega tau c very much smaller than one extreme narrowing condition, I am considering a situation omega tau c is very much smaller than one. All the terms containing omega in the equations for all the three the omega 0, w 0, w 1 and w 2 are negligible. Why? We can see here. Look at this one. This is very much smaller than 1 if you put it. Practically make it 0. Then what is going to happen? This term can be eliminated. Then 3 tau c bar r, r to the power of 6. That is what it is. This is a situation when omega tau c is very much smaller than 1. When, when it is very much greater than 1, it cannot, we cannot ignore this term. That de denominator contributes. So, in a, this is a situation for all the three W0 and W1 and W2 we calculate for this extreme narrowing condition. Then here also the term this one goes to 0. We can ignore that. Omega tau c. Both of both, both the situation because omega tau c is very small both of them you can, you can ignore it and again we are going to get 2 tau c to the power of 6. This term goes to 0. Go to omega 2, I am sorry, W2. Again, 12 TC, this term goes to 0. 12 tau C by what? R to the power of 6. So, we know the transition probabilities, that is W0, W1, and W2, all of them are inversely proportional to R to the power of 6, and of course, multiply by certain tau Cs. Now, assuming the molecule exists, they exist extreme narrowing density, okay, this thing. I substitute these parameters or what we arrived what we arrived at for uh, all the three we can substitute in this equation. This is the equation remember I told you about enhancement in the signal intensity. This term is called eta it is enhancement term. If I saturate the spin s yes, how much is the intensity NOE I gain I am going to get pass gain or not is given by eta. Eta i tells you about the NOE factor. When I am irradiating the spin S and this was the equation given I told you earlier. Okay, So, this is the situation. We will substitute that for all the W's what we are aware at at extreme narrowing condition. You substitute for this equation. We got in the, in the previous uh, two slides back I showed you what is W1, W0 as uh, while when we eliminate omega tau c form uh, parameter, this is what the terms we got for W2, W0 and this is for W1, we all we got. Same thing we substitute for this equation. Now, you can calculate very easily r to the power of 6 here, if you take a, take it out, here also r to the power of 6 minus you take it out, this cancels out. 
and tosio also gets cancelled out as a common factor then what is left here 12 minus 2 2 plus 6 3 2 into 3 6 plus 12 this is the equation you am going to get what this equation tells me eta gain the intensity when i erase it as spin s yes, at the site of i is maximum is half when in an extreme narrowing condition i told you in an extreme narrowing condition the maximum gain in the intensity is half that's what it is this can be work, uh, shown by graphically like this what will happen when i change the resonating frequency how it changes for two homonuclear spins as a function of tumbling rates these are the tumbling rates but at different radio uh, are different larmer frequencies at 200 400 thing but by and large it follows same same pattern remains same but only thing is omega tau c is, is shifted a bit okay depending upon whether you know what is the tau c depending upon the tau c anyway varies and larmer frequency we are uh, for a given molecule tau c is kept constant this one varied as a consequence this omega tau c this position is zero crossing over is shifting with a different larmer frequency this is what is expected because the factor is omega tau c is a coming as a multiplying factor multiplying factor so omega tau c matters when tau c is changing like this because this is also getting changed all right enhancement in homo heteronuclear case we'll find out for homo nuclear case for example protons both gamma is same in this expression okay so gamma a is equal to gamma x i am taking a x pin system what is the maximum in you are going to get 50 percent half what happened in the case of heteronuclear pins it goes by the ratio of the gamma because in this heteronuclear case gamma is not same so gamma ratio comes into picture see this is what the factor eta s is equal to this remember this thing this we this i showed in the previous uh, two last two classes also so if i this is equal to this now this is equal to this half so in the homonuclear case this is identical gamma is equal to gamma i so this is maximum is half but in the heteronuclear case this we have to take into account ratios of the gammas are important and this is what happens so for heteronuclear case it goes by the ratio of the gammas okay how much is the enhancement of the intensity you are going to get enhancement in the NOE if proton is irradiated my irradiation spin is that is gamma eta i into s in this flower bracket s s is my proton what is the enhancement of the intensity for i that is for different nuclei when i irradiate proton how much gain i am going to get this is what it is see irradiated pro spin is proton and enhancement signal is enhancement is seen on the x nuclei what is the x nuclei there are varieties of nuclei is given here how much NOE maximum we can get if i irradiate proton for lithium nearly 340 times enhancement of the signal that is really enhanced large huge enhancement you are going to get and go to the case of other carbon 13 199 that is almost 200 percent intensity gets doubled here it gets nearly three and a half times here nitrogen 15 it is five times see this is the ratio of minus 494 times enhancement for silicon of course negative because they are all negative with nuclear with negative magnetic moment look at this one rhodium almost 1600 times enhancement this is also iron so depending upon the nuclei in which you are seeing the enhancement this i am talking about heteronuclei i am irradiating proton i want to see what is the enhancement in the other nuclei heteronuclei in which case there's a significant advantage if you do noe gain in the signal intensity is enormous you will see that that gives you a lot of information noe is and anyway, we gives a lot of information here okay and another important thing if i when i was discussing carbon 13 i told you if you remember it is an important factor for improving the sensitivity of the low gamma nuclei for example when i was doing broadband decoupling of carbon 13 remember i said several ways of decoupling continuous wave broadband decoupling gated decoupling you know 
டீகப்ளிங் வித்தவுட் திஸ் திங் என்எஸ்சி என்ஓஇ ஆல் தோஸ் ஃபேக்டர் வி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் இந்த ப்ராட்பேண்ட் டீகப்ளிங் வென் இட் இஸ் டன் வென் யூ லுக் அட் தி கார்பன் தேர்ட்டி தெர் இஸ் என்ஹான்ஸ்மெண்ட் என்ஓஇ தெர் இஸ் என்ஹான்ஸ்மெண்ட் தட்ஸ் வாட் ஐ டோல் அட் தட் டைம் தெர் இஸ் என்ஹான்ஸ்மெண்ட் இன் என்ஓஇ விச் ஐ சேட் ஐ வில் டிஸ்கஸ் லேட்டர் திஸ் இஸ் தி ரீசன் வென் டூ டீகப்பிள் கார்போட் ப்ரோட்டான் அப்சர்வ் கார்பன் தேர்ட்டீன் தெர் இஸ் என்ஹான்ஸ்மெண்ட் இன் தி இன்டென்சிட்டி பை நியர்லி டூ டைம்ஸ் தட் இஸ் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் பர்சன்ட் அண்ட் யூ கேன் சி தட் ஹியர் gamma a into gamma x gamma over 1 over 2 x i saturate the a spin and observe the gain in the x spin x is the observation the total intensity is given by this equation i not is the original intensity that's what it 1 plus eta is the factor of that is the gain total intensity when i am decoupling proton this just substitute here it turns out to be 2 that means i am observing carbon 30 i am decoupling proton and this is the enhancement in the intensity in nearly 200% that means twice the signal enhancement will be there all right instead of that if i see proton what will happen we'll see that of course enhancement is given on the proton when 13c is decoupled remember now it is reversed in the previous example i observed carbon 13 decoupled proton but here i am doing the reverse i am decoupling carbon 13 observed proton so in our expression in the whatever the nuclei which is there in the flower flower bracket that gets changed here get changed here this is carbon 13 this is proton now and this is what this intensity you are going to get about 12.5% so remember even in the case of detecting proton there is a gain in the intensity on the proton signal when we decouple carbon 13 when we observe carbon 13 decouple proton then 200% in the gain in the intensity but here only 12.5% when i decouple carbon 13 that's because of the gamma and that factor is there that's what i discussed okay in the envoy so far we discussed a lot how we get the gain in the intensity everything we understood various factor that affects envoy that also we have slow uh, in this class we discuss lot about omega tau c correlation time what is the omega tau c very much less than one narrow extreme narrowing limit omega tau c very much greater than one it is a diffusion limit omega tau c approximately equal to one there is a limit where there is no envoy varieties of things we discussed and what what tau c correlates what it, it defines about the uh, tumbling motion of the molecule and tau c it depends upon the molecular weight and the, are the slug in sense the molecule how it is rotating everything we understood and of course i also showed a couple of equations for the transition probabilities of w0 w1 and w2 when we substituted that in the enhancement in the intensity where you know w2 minus w0 to uh, w2 plus 2 wi all those the expression is there for the enhancement of the intensity that is the solomon equation which i discussed couple of classes before when we substituted this it have parameters w1 w2 w0 for in the solomon equations for homonuclear case we showed that maximum gain is half in the extreme narrowing limit when there are different heteronuclei present it goes by the ratios of the gamma and we saw several uh, example to see when the uh, when we radiate proton how much gain is there in different nuclei basically what is important is when you are looking at the carbon 13 nmr we de- detect carbon 13 while decoupling proton that is where envoy factor comes into picture when that is done i assured you there is 200% gain in the intensity enhancement intensity is th- almost each week will be doubled whereas if i decouple carbon 13 and observe proton there is 12.5% enhancement in the intensity so these are all some of the important things about envoy i we discussed envoy is a very very important factor to get this uh, this thing spatial proximity when i told you about it depends upon rij that means if you know the intensity if you know the nye factor from the uh, nye gain we can correlate it to the distance so we can get distance information so far that's what we discussed since the time is getting up i'm going to stop here but doing this telling this is easy, easy but there will be a lot of complications involved in nye we will discuss that in the next class thank you